Sir Francis Drake was a privateer, someone who was hired to plunder or take on tasks thrown at them, who served the British in their conquest against the Spanish. Drake was the first Englishman to circumnavigate the earth and was knighted for his efforts and service to the English. Drake helped to form the British Empire through his exploration of the West Indies, encounters with the Spanish Armada, and exchange with the Spanish and the Indians. Drake's work influenced the development of modern Britain. Europe in the 1500s was different than it is now. Parliament was more prominent and separated the rich from the poor. Queen Elizabeth ruled, and some of her motives were questionable. The world had only been explored by Ferdinand Magellan, and up until that point, there wasn't a complete knowledge of the placements of the continents and the mysteries that lay on the other side of the ocean. Whoever sailed across the world instantly was ahead of all the other continents in terms of power, and Britain wanted power. It wasn't until a young explorer was introduced to Queen Elizabeth that Britain had a chance. Drake didn't start out his career on a high note. On a voyage to Rilo de la Hacha, he was captured by the Spaniards and tortured. Based on his account of his journey, as he speaks of the wrong he suffered with Captain Lavelle. This developed a hatred against the Spaniards. After this event, and prior to Drake's circumnavigation, he made a journey to Nombre de Dios to attack the Panama Isthmus and gain a copious amount of riches. His initial attempt was a failure, resulting in wounds and a hiatus of almost a year. His true success wasn't attained until he met up with a French buccaneer Guillemade Latestu, and combined with Drake's determination and a lust for revenge, came away with 20,000 pounds in gold and silver, a large sum at the time. This was the first plunder that would lead to many others, each more prolific than the last. Sir Francis Drake always wanted to explore the world, to see what lay over the horizon. In his account of his journey, the world encompassed by Sir Francis Drake, the author goes on to say, Captain Francis Drake, having in a former voyage in the years 72 and 73, the description whereof is already imparted to the view of the world, had a sight, and only a sight, of the South Atlantic, and thereupon either conceiving a new or renewing a former desire of sailing the same in an English bottom. This desire was realized on December 13, 1577, when Drake and his crew set sail from Plymouth encompassed by the Atlantic Ocean and four other ships, not foreseeing the riches they would attain and the hardships they would endure. The affair with Thomas Doughty is just one of many events Drake and his crew went through. Thomas Doughty, a former friend to Drake and a prominent Englishman, tried to cause a mutiny against Drake due to the harshness of the journey thus far. Drake told the crew that the journey was going to be a simple trading expedition to the Nile River, but that was a cover-up for the fact that the journey would be immensely more complex than that. In an article titled, The Famous Voyage, The Circumnavigation of the World, 1577-1580, through 1580, it details what Doughty did before his beheading, being found guilty before the judges for treason and mutiny. Before the execution, he and Drake dined together as old friends, and both received communion from Chaplain Fletcher. After embracing Drake and praying for the Queen and the realm, Doughty quietly put his neck on the block and received the strip of the sword. When Drake was navigating through Magellan Strait, a very narrow route to pass through South America, he encountered violent storms and winds. These storms were so violent they caused Drake's whole fleet to become separated and damaged, according to his own account. God, by a contrary wind and intolerable tempest, seemed to set himself against us, forcing us not only to alter our course and determination, but with great trouble, long time, many dangers, hard escapes, and final separating of our fleet, to yield ourselves into his will. Most parts of Drake's voyage aren't questioned, and are believed to be common knowledge among historians. The next part of his journey still has the community searching for what Drake called Nova Albion, 
named after the similarities between the mysterious bay and the white cliffs of Dover that Drake called home. This bay is where Drake stayed for about five weeks, repairing his ship and regaining the strength to finish the journey, and also befriending the locals, a tribe of Indians known as Milwaukee. This bay is important because it was claimed as belonging to Queen Elizabeth, and also the first English colony being established on foreign shores. The discrepancies in what people think start here. Nova Albion could be in three different states located on the west coast of North America, and any evidence found is questioned after the fake plaque that was forged to match Drake's account. Nova Albion is still a mystery. The voyage was a huge success. Every one euro that was invested, Drake matched with 47. Even though the voyage was a huge success, it had to be kept under wraps in order to not alert the opposing King Philip. Because of Drake's loot, England was able to pay off a debt, and according to the famous voyage, the circumnavigation of the world, start a new venture, the Levin Company, a firm which played an important part in the development of British foreign trade. Drake wasn't the first person to sail around the world, and he also wasn't globally acknowledged for it until after he had passed. The real reason was because of his findings that led to an advance in cartography, his relentless attack on the Spanish Armada, and the path he forged for the British Empire.